What's up guys, Chad here. I'm on my way to CDO, Kagayan de Oro. Random vlog here because I got a mixed bag of footage that I took while I was there, but here goes. <laughs> so I wasn't actually in CDO for very long, but I did some great wandering around and I got a pretty good sense of what the city's all about. I love this kind of thing because it's just so different than back home. We don't have markets like this. You're not gonna see people lugging up bags of produce upstairs. Everything is just different. I find it all super interesting. And the cool thing is many Filipinos think you're interesting, especially in a place like this where there's not a lot of foreigners. So friendly. Hey, what's up, man? What are these? What's it for? Uh, it's a uh, lumpia wrapper. A lumpia? Yeah. Uh, okay, gotcha. All right, wandering around the public market in CDO. Every city in the Philippines has some sort of public market. They're all a little bit different. This one is absolutely massive. Second floor is all produce. Downstairs is all dry goods. No foreigners. One of the unique things about coming to Mindanao, you just don't see that many. And one of the unique things about the Philippines in general, the fruit. So many good options. On this trip though, I just grabbed some mangosteen and some golden watermelon to go. What's up guys? It's another day in CDO. I am cruising around the city. I'm at Ayala Mall. If you've been to the Ayala Mall in Cebu City, this kind of looks familiar. You know the terraces? Well, this one here in CDO kind of has the same thing. Little garden hangout area down below with a little wraparound, multi-level sort of deck with restaurants. It is extremely similar to that. The vibe I'm getting here is you know, a big city vibe, I guess similar to Cebu City. You know, a decent amount of traffic. You got a bunch of nice shopping malls. You get around mostly by taxi. So right off the bat, I'm kind of getting the same vibes as Cebu. Maybe a smaller version of that. Um, let's see, what else? Not a lot of foreigners here. I'd say that's something that stands out right away. Like, not at all. However, I hear this is an area where more expats are moving to the prices um, I'm paying about 30 something a night to stay in this hotel that I'm at you know the rooms are super nice uh, it's a pretty updated modern kind of hotel it's got a awesome rooftop lounge I went there right away I've been up there almost every night just to grab dinner it's good food but um, as far as safety goes I don't really have any concerns with that I've kind of been wandering around different parts of the city I haven't done a lot at nighttime, and I have heard, you know, you just have to be cautious with that, but that's the same in any city. So I wouldn't say because it's in Mindanao, you have to be careful. You know, when I was looking at Airbnbs and stuff like that, I'd say there's definitely less options, but there are similar options in terms of like staying in a condo with amenities, pool, stuff like that. So similar in that regard, I would just say like a smaller version of Cebu with not as many options. Um, really doesn't have the foreigner kind of scene here, the expat scene that you do in, in Cebu. So if you come here, it might be a little bit more challenging if you're looking to make friends with other foreigners. Um, friendliness is totally the same. You know, everyone's just going about their day. Hi, see, I just said friendliness is Hi. the same. What's I'd up? say, oh, geez, prove my point. <laughs> prove my point, right? Super friendly, typical Filipino community. Very uh, quick to say hello. Let's see, as far as coming here as like a dating option, I know a lot of people have been talking about, and I've been talking about on this channel, as far as meeting people in, uh, in Mindanao or areas outside of the main areas like Cebu and Dumaguete and even like Iloilo or Manila. So I, my opinion on that is going to areas where there's less foreigners, I think that gives you a unique advantage of just meeting the kind of person that you're looking for. Um, so I think CDO falls right into that as far as being a little bit better of an option as far as meeting a Filipina. Um, I think that you can meet someone that lives, you know, within a few hours of here in the province that could easily, you know, take a bus and meet you here. If you're coming from Cebu City, it is a direct flight. It's about a 30 minute flight. And then, um, yeah, I would consider it for sure as an option. I'm standing in such a random spot with a crappy background, but let's see how friendly these people are. Let's see, Hi. how many people wave? One, two, three, everybody is Hello. waving. Hello. <laughs> What's up? Hello. Hello. Hey guys. Yeah, 
it's pretty awesome. That's everywhere in the Philippines. It just happens over and over again. So yeah, these are my, my initial thoughts on, uh, on CDO, guys. I have adventured through another part of Mindanao, northern Mindanao, uh, Dipilog, uh, Dapitan, um, there's some other, Claridel, a really small town, so awesome, super friendly. So the vibe I'm getting in Mindanao, at least through these northern parts of Mindanao, I would say 100% if you want to come and check it out or if you want to come here to meet a Filipina that you've met online or whatever, don't hesitate. I wouldn't say that it's a place to avoid at all. And when I first started looking into the Philippines, I remember matching with people in Mindanao and then reading about it and saying, man, I don't think I can go to Mindanao. It's dangerous for foreigners. And I mean, things can happen anywhere. And I think there is reason to be cautious of anywhere you go. So don't think that it's just, you know, the safest place where nothing can happen. My point is, <laughs> point is, it's not what the news tells you. It's not what you're reading because I've been going through these towns and I just feel the vibe is the same as other parts of the Philippines. That's my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. And um, yeah, I'm gonna keep venturing on and see what I can run into here while I'm here. I'm not here for too, too long. Heading back to Cebu City. I just wanted to get a, get a taste more and more of uh, these out of the way areas so I can share with you guys my thoughts. All right, what's up? Now we're at a place called The Boulevard. I don't know if it has any other name besides the boulevard and there's nobody here i took a taxi here it was about a three minute ride from kind of the downtown area where the malls are apparently people come here to go for walks go for a jog i can see why it's nicely paved they have it blocked off from traffic so you can't actually ride your vehicle down here and apparently it ends up along the river nobody here i don't understand this completely if they built this just for um you know for pedestrians to get out and exercise maybe it's just because it's the heat of the day no one's out here all right guys i'm gonna cross over to the other side there's nothing on this side and i know there's a river that kind of runs in between the city i kind of think it's on this side yeah it is all right but um yeah interesting looks like a bunch of homes on the water here yeah you can see the river it's not much of a not much of a scenic river got some homes down there and um yeah the boulevard guys if you're coming to cdo and you want to go for a jog and you want to get away from traffic check it out i'm gonna jog for you guys look at this oh yeah oh yeah this is good what a what a good spot for jogging nobody in the way i mean i can just go in any direction without bumping into anybody no cars no cars are gonna run me over i can go slow i can go fast yeah, I'm liking it. The boulevard. I give that a nice little uh, check mark as far as, you know, call it green space or uh, park space. You got the green off to the side. Yeah, all right. Moving on. Let's see what else CDO has to offer. For all you Canadians and Americans that like to go camping and you have to buy firewood and you pay like $15 for a bundle, that's uh, about 20 cents. They're not huge bundles, but. 20 cents would not be nice going camping in Canada for all you uh, youtubers out there especially the Dumaguete crew where the majority of videos are pretty chill I'm talking chilling on a couch talking to the camera maybe there's a little birdie next to you great videos but you're not getting any exercise doing that fellas you come out and do a little walk and talk vlog through different parts of the Philippines man I'm burning some uh, some of my belly fat Sweating it out too. Should probably get some water. Hi there. Do you have cold water? Uh, over here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I need to hydrate. Do you have? Uh, do you have one bigger than that? That's okay. As long as it's not hot. Well, you know what. You, do you have any that are cold? Oh, that's cold. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Nothing better than cold water on a hot day. But I love, I love sorry sorries. You can literally be anywhere in the city, of course, but even in the middle of nowhere in the province, in a little barangay, and they probably have two or three sorry sorries right there where they've loaded up on snacks and water and 
everything that you might need. All right, hydrated and feeling better. I'm going through an area that seems to be like kind of a medical complex, a bunch of diagnostic centers. I think there's a hospital right up here. There's a dentist behind me, but I just wanted to show you guys prices. So if you need to do lab work, um, St. Joseph Laboratory Services, like if you're doing, let's see, CBC, blood typing, so 150, so like $3, 250, all the way down to like a urinalysis for like $1.30. That's unbelievable. Am I reading that right? Yeah. So you could do cholesterol check for like $4. Blood, all types of blood tests between $3. The most expensive one I'm seeing here is this 100 grams OGTT and that's about 15 bucks. Wow, that's insane. Ultrasound, I don't know how much that is, but I think that's probably one of the benefits of coming to an area. I could be wrong here. This is just a, a total guess. If you're in an area where there's not a lot of foreigners and expats or touristy, I mean, prices definitely fluctuate depending on where you are. And I think when the demand is there and the money's rolling and, you know, a place like BGC, you go to do lab work, you're going to spend a lot more than $1.40 to do a urinalysis. So you come to a place like this, there are foreigners that live in these types of cities and they probably find awesome little places to live for very cheap you know if you're doing like long term there are so many ways that you can save on just the day-to-day -day stuff in a you know an area like this so to each their own guys my last video was focused on mac 10 newtown a development in lapu lapu which you're gonna pay a premium to live there and uh it's good for my friend jerry but not good for everybody some people want to get away from all that and live live in these kind of areas so it's pretty interesting the options are there for everybody people are looking at me as soon as you grab a camera and you're just talking to yourself there's a lot of curiosity who is this weirdo all right we're actually coming up in my hotel here in a little bit i need to get in some air conditioning for a few it is hot <laughs> All right, guys, I am back. It's actually a week and a half later. Look, I have like totally different facial hair right now. I dropped the ball. I got so hot on that walk that I just spaced it. I didn't really wrap the video up. And then I flew out the next morning and here I am in Dumaguete a week and a half later finishing this video. I told you it was a random vlog. Anyways, guys, that was just a little sneak peek into CDO and some of my thoughts based on the little bit of time that I spent there. I have a lot of trips coming up. Uh, Ilo Ilo is one of them and Bacalod and other towns in Negros that I'm going to tour around to. So stay tuned for that guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it as always. More to come. See you soon. <laughs>